playing whole tone scales are also fun. You can start on any note. It's all the same. Start off by playing a whole step. Move to the next row and going up this time to the diagonally to the right. Start on any note. I could do it if your hand is wide enough. Three notes at a time. And then skip to the next row. So all these kind of patterns are really, really awesome and make this instrument something that you can really uh, kind of sink your teeth into and invest your time and your mind into and get some great results. You'll notice that the axis has different colors assigned to the different keys. And this will help you to orient yourself around the instrument. Much like a black and white piano, the axis has white keys and it has black keys. The white keys, similarly, are going to be all the equivalent to the white notes on the piano, and the black keys here on the axis will be black keys on the piano as well. The difference is that some of the keys on the axis are blue. All the G-sharps and A-flats, which is actually the same pitch, are going to be the darker blue, and all the light blue keys are D. As you look at the instrument, notice how that really uh, comes together and orients you because all the D's are at like equivalent points around the keyboard and all the G sharps, the darker blue, are, well, it's a tritone away, but it makes for a very noticeable pattern. So as you begin to play it, you can really find your way around. When I was first learning to play the keyboard, I remember my teacher was teaching me a little bit about improvisation and saying that, oh, if you just play the black keys and you kind of improvise on that, it makes a very pretty sound. The same is true on the axis. If you're just turning it on for the first time, maybe find a piano sound and, and try that. Just improvise a little bit, you know, with the black keys. The other thing that you'll notice about the axis is that you have the same note in different spots. So you might have... With the harmonic table, that's the way that things lay out. So you'll be able to do two-handed things that are really pretty interesting. You might want to play something that on the piano might be very, very confusing, but here on the axis... To do that on a piano, you'd have to have your hands like intertwined with each other. So the layout uh, of the keys and the color will help you really to orient yourself and make the instrument very friendly. The other thing that you have to notice is the subtle changes of color. And what I mean specifically is that the axis can be divided into three different zones. Notice that you have your white keys in the middle, the pure white, and then off to the left, the white is actually a shade of gray. And on the right side, you have that again. So this will tell you when you have the instrument split where your zones are. When I first got the Axis, I was excited to have an instrument that was pattern-based, as this is. I was thinking about what, uh, the writing sessions in Dream Theater when I'm writing music with John Petrucci, who is, of course, one of the world's greatest guitar players. And the way he composes is sometimes very pattern-based. And it's always interesting for me to take some of the patterns that he creates on the guitar that sounds so cool and translate those to the keyboard. Because on the keyboard, you know, as we said, it's not pattern-based. So um, everything is with a different fingering. So when I got this, I thought, oh, this is an opportunity for me to really learn a little bit about, you know, how music is created with patterns like that. So I've been having a lot of fun with that and can really appreciate uh, some of that kind of thinking and plan to take this into the next writing sessions as well as a tool to help come up with some other kinds of riffs, which, you know, it does so well. One of the other interesting things here is that when you think chordally, the chords are really very shape-oriented. For instance, you have these various triangles that you can create. Anywhere on the keyboard, you can get to a particular triangle, let's take a major chord, and play it very easily. Remember, you can do it with one finger, because if you play a note, and then go one note up to the right, and then to the left, which creates this nice little triangle, you have a major chord. So anywhere you hit that shape, triangles all over the instrument, you're going to get major. If 
if you're playing on a traditional black and white keyboard, you know that every chord is positioned very differently. Now minor is a triangle similarly to that, but if you go diagonally to the left, that's where you get your minor third. Now we all know that uh, a minor triad is based on minor third and then major third. And just for you theory buffs, a major triad is major third and then minor third. So on the axis, all your minor triads are going to be a triangle to the left. Right? So any note. Wherever you press, it's always going to be the same, same thing. Very, very convenient. Very easy to understand. If you want to build a diminished triad, that's even easier because those notes, as we said, go up in the diagonal. So you can start on any note and then just play consecutive notes in that direction. So you get so, so from any point. If you stay in that configuration, you're going to get two minor thirds. Minor third, minor third, minor third, minor third. And to create like patterns like that of, you know, to play in a diminished kind of concept, you can and play chords. It's a really, really cool thing. Augmented is just as easy. You just go the other way. So if you play anywhere, go up, you can get augmented chords from anywhere. So I hit an F, play consecutive notes there, hit an E. So playing an augmented concept is the same as diminished. A lot of fun. It's very difficult to introduce a new keyboard layout to the musical world. But the new Axis instrument really offers something that's worth your time and will open up entirely new avenues of musical expression for you. Have fun with it.